Well, hello there, guys. It's been a while since we played some Riot Civil Unrest, and I wanted to show you one of the most fascinating battles that I've tried, or riots that I've tried, as the Rebels. Um, and in this one, we actually get to use fireworks to try and overwhelm the enemy. Really showed me just how dangerous fireworks can be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short video, and let's see if we can't get a victory at this mission. I failed so far, but let's take a look. Okay, guys, police definitely have an intimidating presence here. And as you can see, we need to destroy these three generators within the time limit. Now, we have to go straight into offensive mode. And you're going to see our guys change pretty damn quickly. Right now, they're kind of staying fairly nice. And if you just start looking at the front, you're going to already see our guys start to move. And I am going to start firing fireworks because I actually see them getting quite close. I don't like that. Stay back. Boom! That is a direct hit with the firework, guys. Unbelievable. Um, and the firework, the, the fireworks, the fireworks can actually cause severe casualties, but they're not technically made to do that. They're actually made to keep um, or scare the enemy. In this case, we got some very good hits, and I think we have to exploit that. We've got to start moving forward and taking out the generator. So I'm going for that one first. We're doing all of this for the good of the Italian people, or actually to take down um, a generator station. Uh, and I'm sure that Italians, uh, please feel free to put comments down below on what this actual riot was more specifically about. Um, I think it was certainly an environmental riot, but in this case, we're into property destruction. We're trying to destroy these generators. Uh, for what political reason, I'm not sure yet. There were some paper bombs too. These are not as dangerous as grenades. Uh, just kind of scary little bombs that can really put the fright of God into the enemy. As you can see, our guys are fighting back. There are rocks being thrown, paper bombs being thrown. But what we're really trying to do are destroy these structures. So come on, guys. Hit them. And our people are already trying to hit them. The police are actually pushing us back. But with that incredible rocket barrage. I don't know, man. It's, it, it's really... We really don't know yet. Anything could happen, honestly. Smash it. Smash it. As you can see, we're throwing tables, chairs at the enemy. This is getting intense. It's a bit too close for us to uh, be using our rockets here. Although we could still try to get a shot if we have some distance. All right, nice. That piece is getting pretty badly mashed up. What we need to do is get behind the enemy to that piece right there. Get in there, boys. Punch around if you have to. Get them. We need to destroy this in a minute and 50 seconds. And actually, the cops are in payback mode, obviously. Uh, but they're also moving back. I think we've scared them back quite a bit with those rocket barrages, especially. That caused a lot of havoc amongst the police lines. I'm actually going to throw... There we go. That's one bit down. That one's down, too. Now we just need to get this third one. I think we may have this, guys. We'll fire the rockets to further dissuade the police from advancing on us. Oh my gosh! Alright, let's kill that thing. The other ones are destroyed, we can get the hell out of here. I don't know, it's very possible in this game to have a media loss. So in other words, you actually managed to complete the objective, but you've caused so much havoc and been so violent, either as the police or the rioters, that you could potentially lose. But we, you know, our goal coming into this was to be as aggressive as possible. Get it, destroy it. These firecrackers are completely non-lethal, and we did get the objective. Unbelievable. So I really love that one there. Uh, yeah, a really violent fight. Um, we can actually play as the police and see how well we do there. Uh, we can even use live rounds. So if you guys want to post down below what you'd like to see next, specifically if you'd like to see the police with live rounds, if you'd like to see a peaceful hippie protester crowd, whatever would be your ideal riot, drop it down below and we'll try to recreate it. 
Interestingly here, we didn't kill any policemen despite those direct hits. And in the past with this riot, I have killed like two or three accidentally. I think the reason being we got into close proximity and started throwing much heavier objects. Where in this case, <laughs> the fireworks kind of saved the cops because it forced them to be pretty afraid at first and they moved back. Uh, the great part here, uh, I love the true facts news and of course the additional story coming with it. Despite the resistance of 20 police officers, several acts of property damage were caused by rioters in Italy, even though a few hundred were injured. It appears that most managed to go back home without being severely harmed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. We do a tremendous amount of strategy stuff here on this channel, and I'd love to do some more Riot Civil Unrest. Well, hello rates. there, guys. Welcome to another Strategic Command World War II video. And as you probably imagine, this is a little bit before World War II. We are taking a look at the Spanish Civil War. Uh, as you see, we have taken control of the forces of the Republic, and this is just such a fascinating conflict to me. So we have, of course, the forces of the Republic, some of them which include not only the Popular Front, but also PUM. PUM is the Partido de uh, Organización de Unión Marxista. Uh, I think it's the Party of Marxist Unification. Um, and essentially, it is a communist faction working right now for the Spanish Republic, we also have CNT5, the anarchists, a tremendous amount of different anarchist factions and anarchist groups. It's just an awesome place uh, in Spain right now. Well, at least for us war gamers, not for the people uh, living there. Of course, we are fighting against the forces of Generalissimo Francisco Franco, and I do hope that we can beat him. First things first, we've got this place here named Alcazar, and there is a Moscato column near it. Now, Madrid is a city that was very much in favor of the Republic initially. So, of course, we have a lot of support here. I think first we're going to try to attack with just some standard troops. And actually, that was the Burillo column. We're going to go ahead and try to attack the first air fleet, the Popular Front. And actually, later in the war, um, it's quite fascinating that the Americans, there were some American pilots that actually joined the Republican Air, Air Force to assist in fighting Franco's uh, fascists. But at the same time, the Germans and the Italians sent their own air forces to, ass to assist Generalissimo uh, Francisco Franco. Now, of course, as many of you know, George Orwell was actually in Pum, and I would highly recommend you read not only 1984, which most of you have probably already read in school or something like that, but also read his book, Homage to Catalonia, because it catalogs this conflict and his time served in the uh, communist organization, boom, and really fascinating stuff. Now, I'm sending the 1st of May column forward. I want to try and take Cordoba. We should be able to take it fairly easily. And we've also got the Proud Hoon column. Proud Hoon, of course, being an anarchist author here. So a lot of really cool names, and it looks like the developers got every single one of the names down, or at least a very large portion of them. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is Agrippa's plan for this war? And there isn't really much of a good plan, because let's face it, this is a war where factions are popping up absolutely everywhere. Uh, we have some areas along the coast that are going to be hit pretty badly. We have some Bosque factions on our side, as well as a few actual, um, I was about to say Galician. We do have one Galician faction on our side, uh, as well as Catalan factions. And, you know, Franco's forces have better equipment. Uh, they're being supplied by the Germans and the Italians. And, of course, they're very well trained. So fighting against them is going to be tough. But I think the trick is going to be fighting in large numbers. Uh, instead of trying to attack the enemy or trying to cut through their territory, we're not going to be able to blitz our way through F Franco's army. That's just not going to happen. So the only way to Vitoria is through pure attack. So we're going to go ahead and start a pure attack here. Now, over time in this campaign, we are going to be getting some support. We're also going to be getting possibly some armored cars. It all depends, of course, on, on how we do. Right now, not a single one of our units could break through to Victoria, and that's kind of sad. Nonetheless, I'm going to continue the move towards that area. And for now, I'm just going to keep these units at Irun. And the Malatesta column did a pretty good attack there on the Latour column. What I want to start doing is heading west to Zaragoza, uh, modern day Zaragoza. So here we go. And that might just be a misspelling, or maybe that's the way they wanted it spelled. And look at this. The Popular Front, we've also got, of course, the Catalans. A lot of different factions, like I said. The Red and Blacks, a part of CNT5, the anarchist factions. 
and of course the forces of boom and every single one of these guys are going on this march west we're calling this the long march and hopefully it's going to end very very well for us i think this is an area where we have a tremendous amount of stopping power i also want to move the second air fleet forward of the popular front there And here at Valencia, we also have, yes, I said Valencia, because I'm going to say it Castilian way. Uh, we can move towards Teruel and Saragossa from the south. So that's what I think I want to do. But again, we're trying to keep these forces together. So if we're going to be moving there, we want to move everyone together. One of the biggest problems about the terrain uh, here in Spain is it's so mountainous here in the center that these areas are completely cut off. You cannot go through the mountains here. You can't move through them. You can just stay on the actual flat flatland that you see here. So there are a lot of choke points. That, that can help us, but it can also hurt us quite a lot, as you can imagine. So in places like Madrid here, we can essentially hold uh, Avilia. We can hold the Alto de Leon Pass and the Somosierra Pass with just a few units, which is very helpful. But... It also means we can't get to the enemy very easily either. We'd have to go through maybe this pass or maybe even take this territory. No, this is Portugal. Don't you dare go there. We'd have to basically push up through here and, yeah, go through this rail area if we wanted to get what would probably not even be considered a shortcut. Hmm. Okay. We're headed west towards Lugo. Not the greatest idea in the world, and I'm also going to begin an attack on Oviedo. Right here, it looks like the Aranda column, the Nationalist column, is holding out. So let's launch an attack. Pretty good attack there by the CNP uh, column. And now let's send the Republicans in after them. More specifically, uh, members of the Popular Front. And I'm not going to keep on moving towards Lyon. I'm actually going to move back with the UHB column. I'm not familiar with the UHB column at all. And I'm actually not too familiar with the Popular Front. I'm not sure if they were democratic socialists or some sort of just liberal faction. I do believe they weren't as radical um, or as far left as CNT5, uh, Boom, and a lot of the other organizations fighting here on behalf of the Spanish Republic. I really want to get through this gap. It's looking good. But remember, I told you guys at the beginning, if we're going to do this campaign, we need to do it a certain way. And it needs to be completely together. Okay, we could start heading to Burgos, but I'm just moving up this road very slowly here. Let's bring up the Bosques. I don't feel like they're too into the fight. But they're just kind of going along for the ride for now. And as you can see, unfortunately, can't get into those mountains. No matter how hard we try, no matter how much we want to get into those mountains, it's just not going to happen. But we could start sending the units from Barbastro to the west. This is the Viliaba column. I think all I'm going to do is just move up a bit. Of course, we have Fog of War on. And sure enough, we are spotting a nationalist regiment out there. Just making sure we've moved everybody. We also have a navy, believe it or not. It's actually a functioning navy. But we need to go hunting for Franco ships. And I don't think the, navy, the naval war is going to matter too much. Although, keep in mind that the nationalists actually bring in Moroccan mercenaries uh, and Moroccan colonial troops to help them fight this war. Although, the problem is they brought them in on air transports mostly. So, we could possibly stop them. That would be pretty cool, but I don't think it's going to happen. Now, at the end of this turn, the nations of the world are going to take sides. And it's not always the same. i almost 100% sure it is randomized. Another thing I want to do here is reinforce these units in the Badajoz column and these other columns that are just weak. We don't want the nationalists getting easy grabs on any city. Reinforce, max, we can only give them one point. Okay, let's end the turn. Viva la Republica! So now Duruti, a very famous um, CNT5 commander, has risen up, and the workers of Saragossa have launched a general strike. Um, as you can see, the French government adopts a policy of non-intervention. They're not interested in getting uh, into this war. And of course, the common turn, in this case the USSR, is going to provide assistance to us, the Republic. <coughs> Hitler's Nazi Germany agrees to assist the nationalists. And of course, Mussolini's fascist Italy will be doing the same.
Now they're going to send a lot of bombers. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I just, I hate when that happens when you choke on your words. Um, they're going to send a lot of bombers, uh, supporting troops, etc. Let's hope that we can defeat them. I actually don't think they're necessarily going to send troops. A few brigades, not a, not an overwhelming amount. Um, it's basically, basically an expeditionary force. But their air power is frightening. Um, I can't remember what it's called, the bombing of... I mean, they bombed several cities, but there's one in particular where they just hit so many civilians. Uh, and it was just an absolute massacre. So there we go, a lot of nationalist forces moving on the offensive. They are not remaining on the defensive at all. They feel very confident that they could take us out, and I don't blame them. Like I said, better trained. You know, this is the military. This is absolutely the military, uh, sort of a, a coup d'etat of sorts. Well, an attempted coup d'etat anyway, so we need to stop it. They also have Carlists on their side. Uh, the Carlists are essentially monarchists. They want to return to the old Spanish monarchy. And despite not being completely in line with Franco's fascists, they seem to get along fairly well. Same with, of course, the communists and the anarchists on the, uh, the Republican side, as well as the Popular Front. Okay, Moroccan troops are airfielded into Seville. The first German pilots set off for Spain. Man, I don't like that. Okay, we spotted some Carlists in Huelva. It's not like we're going to be able to get to them right now, but something to consider. And we also want to consider the fact that Cordoba could fall if we keep hitting it, but we also have to worry about these other... Um, brigades, the Nuestra Señora Carlista, uh, Our Lady Carlist, and the Asanio Calum, the Nationalist Calum here. But I think what I'm going to do is just put a lot of pressure on Cordoba and try to take it. If they have to reinforce it, they're going to be losing some MPP to do it. It's not going to be easy to do it. So I think that's what we need to uh, push forward with. And with the Proud Hoon Calum, I really do want to attack, but I think the best thing to do here is to reinforce. Even if we can only get them two points, maybe not. Let's attack. No, boys! All right, well, can't win them all. We'll move the Iberia column. This is one of the few columns that actually has a few Portuguese anarchists and communists in it, so I don't want to lose it, but I'm sure it's going to get hit pretty badly. There's also this town, Santa Maria de la Cabeza, and since it's up in the mountains, um, and even though it's in Republican territory, it is pretty much a nationalist stronghold. So we're going to attack the Cortez column, and we're going to try to box them in on both sides so at the very least they can not escape and start taking cities. And with these forces at Madrid, they need to head to the front. And we know where the front is right now. It's near Seville and Cordoba. So I'm immediately going to be sending a bunch of groups here, the Benalvera column. I'll keep a few units back to guard the cities, of course. But for the most part, these guys have to move forward. We also want to attack the units here at Alcazar. So we have to keep some units here, once again, to keep the fight going. The Royal Column is going to get the glorious duty of continuing this fight. And we'll also send in an air attack here. Move forward La Pasionada Column. Man, they are hitting us badly. Let's see if the Mora Column, the Anarchist Column here, can make a difference. All right, that's what I like to see. We should probably have Toledo under our control. We probably should have a unit there anyway, just to be safe. Nice shooting! Perka Gollum did take some shots there, but at least they were brave. Bravery doesn't count for much in this war, unfortunately. Alright, love the forward momentum. Let's see how our Poom Boys are doing over here. That sounded weird, didn't it? Our Poom Boys. <laughs> so we want to get to Huesca. A few of these uh, areas might have nationalist troops in them. We really won't know until we get there. So I'm just going to keep on moving forward with the popular front units. And I want to attack Huesca and Zaragoza. I already see a nice target here, the Roncasville Mola Carlists. So I'm going to hit them with the Rovira Arcair column from Poom. And they actually got a decent attack here. I'd love to hit him a second time, but I don't think our units can get there. Oh, wait a minute. We actually have a popular front unit here. Nice. I need to keep in mind, 
Um, this war got so complicated because of all the factions on both sides that quite often factions wouldn't necessarily support each other in combat. So I think that in a weird way, this recreation does that quite well because not every single unit in the faction is going to operate very well. You're going to have some units that are just kind of not good um, and some units that are excellent. And so kind of playing off that, that theme is, is fun. Now, definitely going to move Darudi up because as you can see, he's bringing morale, supply, etc. to these guys. So I'm going to move him up immediately. And we'll also move up the second air fleet. As for our units at Torosa, same thing here. And we'll be attacking Saragossa from the south. But we need to get to Teruel first. And sure enough, we're going to get ambushed here. Just hit the Iron Column. What sort of name is that for an anarchist uh, column? That sounds almost fascist. We actually shouldn't have moved up there with a ninja column. We're, we're breaking our rules. Remember what we said, guys. We are going to try and keep the units together. No matter what happens. Um, and except, of course, in the situations where it's absolutely impossible. Like, I'd love to go to Granada right now with CNT column 13. But actually, I think the best case scenario is try and get back over here where our men are. Uh, fighting the, the uh, enemy in Cordoba and try and provide some assistance. At least they won't be attacking from Huelva, or if they do, we'll be prepared for that. You know, up here on the coast is where I have a lot of concerns. So let's actually stay away from Vitoria. I'm going to attack the Phalangists. Now, I'm not sure it's... A, I think it's actually pronounced Phalangists. I'm not sure the deal with the Phalangists. Uh, very pro-nationalist. I think they have... Uh, like a true love for the Catholic Church. That's I'm pretty sure that's their main reason for fighting. Again, I'm sure the uh, the history buffs on this channel, and we do have a lot, will be able to you know confirm or deny that, give us a little more information. But nonetheless, they make a ferocious opponent. So I am once again going to commit to the attack on Miranda. Even though it's a small city, Burgos is much more important to us. I think it's important to really focus our forces in one place, as I said before, and not have these guys all separated. That's just not going to get us anywhere. Attack out Oviedo. The Nationalists hold out for a long time in Oviedo. Sure enough, but we will break through eventually. It's just... It's, it's like... Uh, I was going to say it's like... I was going to use a terrible analogy. I'm not even going to say it. Um, but it's very difficult. Let's put it that way. Now, I'm almost certain the Nationalists are going to be here. We actually have an Italian flag, an Italian fascist flag flying over Vigo. Uh, they're definitely dropping off troops. So the only reason I'm sending this unit out is almost as a scouting opportunity. And there we go at Lugo and El Farol. We've got two different regiments that could pose a threat. I'm pretty sure we've moved just about anybody or everybody. And we can also purchase some units. Now, I don't necessarily want to purchase units right now. We'll maybe go ahead with uh, the popular front here. And let's get a division, if we're able to. It doesn't look like we can, though. We'll go into a production later. And right now, really, we should be using our points to reinforce existing units that have already started fighting on the front. Let's end the turn. And let's hope for the best. All right, Moroccan troops have arrived at Cadiz, and I also believe that Generalissimo Francisco Franco has arrived in Spain officially to command the forces. Not a good day for us, not a good day at all. Okay, they actually jumped around and went right to Babastro. And our ambush didn't work very well. You can see in the areas that we have surrounded, they are reinforcing those units, probably from the existing population, just, you know, mustering them into the nationalist forces. I mean, at the point of a gun, you'll join just about any army. Really, it doesn't matter what your politics are. You know, either join or you're a communist uh, by their standards, and you'll probably be shot. I will say, um, I played this particular campaign before, and they're playing a lot more defensively than they usually do. And that's making me a bit uneasy. 
So they might just be soaking up our damage right now, waiting for a big counterattack. Aha! Trying to break through to Madrid? No way. Not going to happen. And actually, that's something that Orwell talks about in his books, is uh, cities like Madrid, there would be trenches, you know, far out from the city in these gaps, and, you know, they would be manned continually, 24 hours a day, of course, uh, and factions would rotate in and out to defend the city or to defend the trenches. Just incredible stuff. You can see here the forces of Santa Maria La Cabeza are trying to break out as well, and we're really just going to try to keep them in. Looks like the enemy might also have some mountaineering troops. There we go. They are going to attack Jerez des Caballeros, and we'll also move these two units down. They've made the first move there, so I feel we can respond in kind. Yep, General Franco flies into Spain, sure enough. And the Spanish Foreign Legion is airfielded into Seville. Those are those Moroccan troops. French, British, and American pilots form a squadron to fight for the Republic. And a Gestuse Liberta column formed by Italian anti-fascists. Very, very fascinating there. And the French and German anarchists form the International Brigades. Uh, if those of you do, that don't know the International Brigades, people from any country could come to Spain and fight for the Republic uh, against the fascists. We also got some HQs here, one for the Popular Front. So I'm going to put that one here in Aranjuez and one also Riquelme for the Popular Front. Since we have one there, let's put this one over here. Actually, no, that's not a very good location for Popular Front troops. Maybe here in Talavera. And look at what we just got for our anarchists, the King Kong Tank Regiment. Yep, you better bet. Now, they weren't really tanks. You know, it was more like an armored car, but it's better than nothing. I was just deciding where I want to put this thing. We have this incredible momentum heading out here from, uh, not from Madrid, uh, but over here from Lerida. So I'm kind of thinking that's not a bad place, but we already have a lot of units. Can never have too many, am I right? So we're going to put them here in Tortosa. As for the international brigades... Malaga, and Justicia y Libertad, also here. Now, we need to definitely get reinforcements to these units, but that's going to take some time. In the meantime, we will continue attacking Córdoba, try to take it, and we are just arriving with the Avanti column, which sounds like it might also be an Italian column. It could also be referring to the Avanti al Popolo chant of the Italian uh, anarchists in general, or Italian communists, I should say. All right, the Ensemble Lorenzo column. Nice attack, very nicely done, but unfortunately now we need to get some reinforcements for these men. So the Proud Hoon column can of course now get some reinforcements. I'd love to attack from Almaden, but we're not going to get the chance. And probably what they're going to do is they're going to reinforce the Cordoba column yet again, as they're going to do with many other columns throughout this conflict. <clears throat> I think we'll get the Salvador de Segui column behind the enemy here. And let's see if we can't wipe out Moscardo's unit. I'll even rotate out men to get the job done. Man, they are defending Alcazar well. Let's see if Mera Anarchists can finally break the deadlock. Man, they are putting up a hell of a fight. These guys do not want to surrender. Don't imagine they'd be treated very nicely anyway. Okay. Well, that's where we're going to stop it for this episode, guys. Um, again, uh, if you enjoyed this series, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Definitely, if you want to give some tactical advice uh, on our actual discord server i was about to say our, our forums but i actually prefer this to be on the discord server if you guys want to go ahead and form factions you know say you're part of cnt or something like that and suggest options to me i'm totally open to that i need support in this as you guys can imagine winning with the spanish republic is extremely difficult extremely difficult it's not an easy task franco's men definitely have the upper hand here there's no doubt about that whatsoever so all we can do here is persevere and kind of get lucky but obviously also 
make some decent tactical decisions. And I think right now the overwhelming force we're using is exactly what we need to do if we want to get a victory in this particular um, battle. It's actually much more like a campaign because this is the entire Spanish Civil War, not just one of the fights from it. What is boom? Okay. Saragossa is obviously a much more valuable city, but I'm actually going to focus on Huesca for now. Got to start small before we can actually move up. And let's bring in the Duruti column. They've got a major name to uphold, but still they can't seem to break the deadlock with the enemy. We've also got these units near, or not near, in Barbastro. It's never good to have units behind your men like this. And we're breaking the golden rule of splitting these forces. So we need to stop that. Still have a large amount of men here but we really don't want to split them too much I, I would love to move forward and attack but i know it's better to attack all at once we'll also move forward with doroti himself it's an interesting day on the front my friends all right you guys didn't do so well give the basques a shot here you can actually see the experience level in the uh, metals there a lot like i said a lot of our units are completely without experience well some of them you know are pretty good it really depends we might be able to get rid of the fouling just here so i'm going to put a lot of pressure here send in the Sela column the anarchists send in the viscaya column the basques i want to get one kill before we sign off here and i think the basques would love to get the first kill on this one and this is the Bakunin uh, column. I actually have this in my library here in Portugal. Um, one of Bakunin's books and Kropotkin's books too. So I don't want to lose that unit if I can help it. But it looks like we're not going to be able to destroy that guy this turn. That's too bad. And I think they'll probably do what, we, what we're expecting them to do. And that is reinforce. But Oviedo may fall next turn. We'll have to wait and see. And you guys will have to wait and see episode two. So if you want to see it quicker or very quickly, uh, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, guys. Thank you so much. Take care and have an awesome, awesome day.